So hello and welcome to episode 4, Ancient Shadows of um, the Last Door. Uh, I really enjoyed this game very much, so I uh, just felt like doing this uh, short video. I uh, already skipped the intro uh, right in front of Alexandra's house. Um, The door to the garden is um, locked from this side. Let's just knock on the main door. No one is answering. Perhaps I should go inside anyway. I'll just tell the household that I'm an old friend come to visit. Footsteps. There must be someone upstairs. We'll have a look upstairs later. We'll look on this um, grandfather clock. Um, one of the hands is missing. Keep that in mind for later. A couple of old teacups sit on the table. One of them is, st is full and still warm. An oil lamp. Always useful. So take it with you. Oh, now we got something else. Spices and stuff. And here we got a diary. This is the last thing written. Uh, the last pages have been ripped off. October 12, 1887. It's been a while since I can't devote any time to this diary for reasons beyond my control. An event most tragic has taken place in this house. Mr. Dupre has gotten ill, immersed in an everlasting stupor from which it seems he shall not return any time soon. Since the accident I patiently take care of him. The doctor's treatments don't seem to do any good. I feed him like a child and make sure that all of the sculptures in the house are turned towards the wall. What else can I do? October the 13th, 1887. The clockmaker just left. He has done such a good job. In the end, Mr. Dupri is not going to be able to notice the change in the clocks that he had so insistently requested. In his state, time will not be a problem anymore. This looks like the diary of a member of Alexander's household. What happened to them? Heading out here, we're out in the garden. We notice here is a locked door to the cellar. I love the garden. We pick this up. We pick up this rope. We notice that there's a grave. Oh, and it gives us a flashback. Check the upper floor. The Luet of a man bears a strong resemblance to Alexander and the silhouette of a woman. <laughs> of an old man and a chest. No wood chest. I'm gonna pick up this hook and there's a fragment of a diary August the 5th 1887. Um, I 
can't work in the basement anymore. Those wretched sculptures. I feel them stalking me in, in the darkness. I know it's not possible, but I can hear the crunches, the flapping wings, stone grinding on stone. Their frozen paroxysms with what diabolical art were those gestures conceived. An eternal movement, a tension, an impossible struggle to get back the life they never had. Um, I might place them outdoors in a greenhouse and let the mold devour them and wasps make nests of, of their hollow hearts. Okay, we can combine the hook with the rope. Let's have a look in the yeah, to the library the working place. We find a large envelope which we should not open under white light. I'll take it with us. I find a letter on the desk. Dear Alexander, I have an I have excellent news. A contact from the university has given me access to a 12th century alchemical tomb containing an amazing formulary. There is no doubt that sometimes mere contemplation, mere contemplation takes the mind to places that otherwise it would never have visited. Leaping through the grimoire and marveling at the exquisite illumination of its pages, I have been struck by a sudden epiphany. A radical but elegant method that I have decided to try. Forgive me for not providing any information about the method itself. As soon as I get de definite results, I will write to you immediately. I believe fortune has truly smiled upon us today. June 8th. Okay, let's have a look at the Simpson invoice. The cuckoo clock mechanism has been modified to give the strokes exclusively at quarter past six in the afternoon. We have to remember that for later. Um, in addition, a special device and a switch have been added to synchronize all clocks in the house. Pictures hanging from a cord. They were improperly developed. So this is a room for developing pictures. Image of a couple wearing rubbed masks at a festival. Glass jar containing a yellow substance. The label says cyanide. Take it with us. <laughs> Big book of home chemistry receipts. Oh, and we only need the second page to develop a positive image. This is done by pouring upon the plate about one ounce of the vitriol spirit solution and then and only then adding five or six drops of the cyanide acid. Um, then the plate must be thoroughly washed off in water to remove any excess of the chemicals. We don't need rest of it. Oh, we'll pick up this light bulb. Um, as it's giving white light at the moment, and we're not supposed to open this envelope under white light. I will have a look at this room. Yeah, and it's Alexander. Alexander's sleeping room. Alexander inside. Alexander, it's me, David. I'm sorry if I startled you. We can ask him. Is everything all right? Why are you sitting in a wheelchair? Are you hurt, maybe? Can you stand? He's staring blankly at some distant point, as if he has not heard my question at all. 
You told me I should come here and I came as soon as I could. Can you tell me what is happening here? He gives no answer, but persistently stares at something nearby. He appears to be in some kind of a hypnotic trance. When I was down there, I could have sworn I'd heard footsteps. Were they yours? Or is there someone else in this house? For a moment I felt a flash of hope that he was looking at me, but he is unresponsive. Alexander, please say something. I don't know what to do. I don't understand just what happened to him. Look at this. The veil is something we sense in our innermost, being incessantly. In vain do we waste our lives craving to tear through. It's Tsa Iliatal. I don't know. The curtain behind which the great wings beat. Inside its ancient mist inhabit the shadows of those who left. And on the table here, we got a box with laudanum to be, it, to be taken in case of anxiety. I don't know if I pronounced that right. And it's empty. Got a cuckoo clock over here with a missing bird. And we can see you. It's turned around. The three is where the twelve is supposed to be. So we head outside again. Oh, we have not opened this door yet. Oh well, do that later. Um, now we will have a, ha a look at the greenhouse. There's a large iron bar latching the door. It's quite odd that the door was latched from the outside. And as we can see here, Whatever was meant to be kept in definitely made its way out. What do we have here? We have statues of angels. One and another one. I can see another one in front. We got this little red spot here. It's a jar of vitriol oil. And we have to be yeah, careful, it's a powerful asset. We just take it with us. Um, and now we come to a part that um, took yeah it took a while till I figured that out. Um, Cause something changed over there. It has not been here before. This is the way we came from to the house, and now we got a dead deer. Hear that sound? <laughs> um, yeah, now we got a light bulb that has red light. Well, let's head upstairs again. No. Let's first go back in the garden and, um,. I don't know if it's necessary to open it, but now we did it. I have a look in the wet in the well. And we found a small bird of brass. Whatever it's been in there.
There we go. Wonderful red light. Can put the envelope in here. We start, as we remember, with the vitriol oil. We go on with the cyanide. And we add water. And there we go, an image is appearing on the plate. It's a photograph of Antony and Alexander and a something like a shadow in the middle. <laughs> got this small jump scare. <laughs> Let's have a look. But the red couple is back in frame. Okay. Now let's show this picture to Alexander. Maybe we can get him out of his stupor. Alexander, do you recognize this photograph? Take a look. It's you and your old friend Anthony, and there's someone else blurred in the background. Who is the third figure? Does he mean something to you? Bird awaits. He's breathing heavily. He seems to be lacking air. He lost a piece of clockwork. Let us see if we can add the cuckoo bird. We oh, hear something is inside the bird. We can put the bird at the cuckoo clock. And now we go downstairs and have a look again at the grandfather clock. And add the missing part. And now we have to the cuckoo clock. One to four. There we go. hear the sound coming from upstairs. Let's have a look. Bird has burst out. And we can see there was a key inside of the bird. Alexander is going mad. He's having some kind of a seizure. He's trembling out of pure horror. Too bad the laudanum is empty. Just head in the garden. The quick was there was the locked door to the cellar. We'll open it up. <laughs> Not the small jumps here. <laughs> the shovel here inside the cellar. This and no other is the function of the serum we manufactured at the boarding school when we were young. It is something that we didn't understand at that time, to accompany the mind to the proscenium of the big theater and there help us to look behind the curtain that separates the world of man from the land of truth. To look, I say, if anything, to apprehend an image of what lives there. Just that. Will the hoopo allow us to raise the curtain enough to walk off the stage and go beyond?
jars and test tubes, mechanical residues, cage. Jars full of murky objects suspended in formaldehyde. <laughs> okay. Just a typical cellar. We can have a look at the grave. We can open it up. A rusted lock. We can use the vitriol again. It's um, so some sort of a humanoid body, but it has a grotesque animal aspect. Maybe it has been a small ape. Yeah, this is old Mike. It's, he's been a pet. Probably the one in the cave down there, in the, in the cage, in the cellar. We take this rolled up canvas he's holding in his hands. And it's a map of the stars that shows us the summer triangle, the summer triangle. <coughs> oh, and this sounded like Alexander. So let's head up and see what happened. There's some diary pages on the wheelchair. The papers ripped apart it is as if someone had stripped it off the book hastily. So it's the missing pages of the diary we found in the kitchen. October the 31st, 1891. I'm writing this in the light of my desk lamp, hoping to be able to remember it all when the birds finally sing and the sun's blessing dispels the dark shadows of the mind. During the whole afternoon a strong wind hit the valley so strong that it has cracked the larger branch of the old oak in the garden. I find it hard to get sleep during these nights, so I read, so I read a lot while accompanying the professor. I don't really know when exactly I fell asleep. I was awakened by the chill of the night which was seeping through the open window. I looked outside and I saw him. The professor was miraculously awake. What was my joy to see him standing on the balcony, watching the valley with a due serene expression, enjoying the fresh and calm air right after the storm. I felt that a blessing had fallen upon his house, upon this house, and for a moment I felt immensely happy. I stared at him for a while without saying anything, being afraid of dispelling a vision I hadn't believed possible for a long time. And then, in the midst of the silence, I heard a sound that froze me in my seat and snatched all my calmness with such a terrible chill that I will never forget. A loud noise beside me, low-pitched as the drag of a slab. Mr. Alexander snore, who was pleasantly sleeping in his bed. I've already made a decision. I leave this house. Never more. <laughs> Said the raven. So let's have a look outside. And we found a crystal lens.
What was that? Secret entrance is open now. Can look through here and we see uh, the stars. And as we remember, we found the canvas that show us the summer triangle. Uh, we will try to find the summer triangle here. I think it's a bit hard, so let's just see if I can get it. It's this one. I think it's this one from this one. Yeah, we found it. Okay. Correct. This is the summer triangle. And we see this desk here. Um, it has no knob or lock. Just those strange symbols this triangle shaped yeah way and if we use the lens on the summer triangle the crystal lens we can see those symbols and we just have to yeah use them to open the desk small cabinet with two slots for syringes. Only one of them remains. So we'll take this. The voice again. It comes from the bottom of the pit. Go down the pit now. This is kind of like a dead, a dead end. If you try to get back again and try to leave the room, you won't be able to because um, the angels, the statues will block the way. But this is the way to get the, uh, the steam achievement. Um, the angels protect the house. If you try to leave the room again, it will give you the, um, it will give you the achievement. Well, let's give it to Alexander. The last door we can cross together. What should I do? I am waiting for you here in the mist. It's nearby. I can hear it. What is nearby? What do you hear? I hear the beating of its wings. It knows we are afraid. I am ready. Sit down. the end of the last door. Do you think that we will find any clue here about David's whereabouts? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, the doctor. People looking for David. This was the beginning. The police must have taken almost everything, but we have no other leads to pursue. Hopefully they have overlooked something. What about this room? 
There is a sealed letter between this table and the wall. It looks like Mr. Beechworth never sent it. I think it's best that you read it. Dearest Alexander, please, you must reflect on this. We do not yet know what we are dealing with. If you were to open the door, it may stay that way. An open way for whatever lives on the other side. Videta nequis giat.